Well, it's the detective. Checking down another wayward husband to his mistress? Why? Someone stand you up? You trying that, uh, what do you call it? Evasive language on me? And who are you, huh? Valentine's new dick in training? We're working together, yeah. Really? Well, you're in luck. I got a special offer on... Insurance. That's right. You hand over everything you got in that pot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Nick, Valentine makes a rare visit to town, and you're hassling his friend here with that extortion crap? Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? She ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn. I said let her go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Now why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. You all right, sister? I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now don't let this incident taint your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Yeah, I feel you. Good. You stay cool, and you'll be part of the neighborhood. So long as you remember who's in charge. Well, hello. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Let's see what you have. Murder and mayhem at a discount.
Brotherhood of Steel better stay out of good name. That's what I'm saying. <coughs> oh, a new face walks into my store. And you're not even... Did you say something about... That's right. Some newcomers are missing. Sure. So you need some supplies? Sure. Everything's guaranteed to last. Until it doesn't. Hey, Daisy. Oh, you're back. Can't get enough looks of this lovely figure of mine. <laughs> no? <laughs> Guess you'll just have to shop then. Got any work? I do, actually. Super mutants have taken over the old Boston Public Library. I got a lot of fond memories of that place from when I was a girl and human. You get those lumbering brutes out of there, I'll pay you 200 caps. Actually, I already took care of those super mutants. You did? Huh. Now that's service for you. Here's your money. Oh, and why don't you take this old book of mine? Been holding on to it for a while. If you ever happen to go back there. Hancock says newcomers are welcome in the third rail. Go on in. Wait till this song is over. Hey, Rufus. Hold up. I want to hear this song. You there. We need to have a conversation. Let's hear it. I'm always looking for people who know how to handle themselves in dangerous situations. From what I hear, you may fit the bill. I don't mind danger. You'll get paid the starting rate, like everybody. By the way, I'm Edward D. Right. But you'll need to talk to my boss first. His name is Jack Cabot. He likes to personally come down to Cabot House and Beacon Hill. What? Another one of you mercs looking for McCready? He's in the back. Yeah. Something. But if you're alive. searching no. for something, so I'm happy to be able to deliver a little bit. Oh. Now that is some Hey, Rufus. Wait till this song is over. About the whereabouts of Diamond City's most effective detective. Rest easy. Nick Valentine is Can't back say I'm surprised to find you in a dump like this, McGreedy. I was wondering how long I'll take the butt out and track it down. I, for one, am ready back. Don't tell me you're getting rusty. Should we take this outside? It ain't like that. I'm just here to deliver a message. Here. 
In case you forgot, I left the gunners for good. Yeah, I heard. But you're still taking jobs in the Commonwealth. That isn't going to work for us. I don't take orders from you. Not anymore. So why don't you take your girlfriend and walk out of here while you still can? What? Winlock, tell me we don't have to listen to this shit. Listen up, McCready. The only reason we haven't filled your body full of bullets is that we don't want a war with Good Neighbor. See, we respect other people's boundaries. We know how to play the game. It's something you never learned. Glad to have disappointed you. <laughs> you can play the tough guy all you want. But if we hear you're still operating inside gunner territory, all bets are off. You got that? You finished? Yeah. We're finished. Come on, Barnes. Look, lady. If you're preaching about the Atom or looking for a friend, you've got the wrong guy. If you need a hired gun, then maybe we can talk. I'm interested. If you think you've got what it takes. You're joking, right? I've been doing this since I was a kid. I know my way around. I used to run with the gunners, for God's sake. You're acting like I'm supposed to know what you're talking about. Maybe it's better that you don't. I don't want the stink of Winlock and Barnes rubbing off on me and scaring away my business. Now what about you? How do I know I won't end up with a bullet in my back? All I can give you is my word. And a bunch of caps. A bunch of caps, huh? Okay, Hotshot. Price is 250 caps. Up front. There's no room for bargaining. Everything's negotiable. Would you take 200? You drive a hard bargain. But you just bought yourself an extra gun. All right, boss. Let's get out of here. Valentine. Time to hit the road? Let's head out. Well, all right. Damn, I uh, forgot to pick up that motor oil for you, Valentine. Cute, McReady. You come up with that all on your own? Hey everyone, gather around. Let's kick the breeze back. Shoot the fat. Now I know you all are doing your own thing, but I don't want anyone here to forget what matters. Hey, Daisy, glad you can. How's my favorite? May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Take it, this isn't a social call. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Isn't there some way to make this work? This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's 
what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Mm, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model synth. Is he still compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. Hey, I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. I'm static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Is Nick gonna be okay? Yes, the connections appear to be stable. Hopefully, it'll be as simple as unplugging the implant once we're done. But that doesn't get around the current problem. The memory encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Any idea of what I'm gonna see in there? I have no clue. But considering we only have a single piece of the medial temporal lobe and not the whole brain, I doubt it'll be cohesive. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Mm, what a joke. What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Dangerous. People are always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. Who said the NCL would bring back the good old days? Like, before the... Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but, uh... She loved me, in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out! Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. Where the fuck did you put my boot? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it. If you're... This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. The thing about happiness is, is, you only know you had it, and it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back, by comparison with what comes after, that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, She'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah, you've got to give it a chance. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we... There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but... Uh... Dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. Sit down. Suit yourself. There was always a job for someone like me. 
Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mr. Hallon, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the inst first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement. Which suited me just fine. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you? The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but... I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. There's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah. Uh, ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis. Big heads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. All computers are still working. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. 
I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Second group. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if she somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If she could take me out, they won't be able to hide from her for long. Hopefully. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never like to. But it was better this way. Better than taking his kid and leaving him alive. Just find him. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. six. The eggheads never like taking orders from a... I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory, so good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. 
Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Kellogg. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. It's okay. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. It's all over but the dreaming. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready.
How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Okay. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Dr. Amari? Let's start over. How are you feeling? Uh, am I okay? Are you seeing anything... anything bad? Don't be alarmed. But I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory, but your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? There's more than one person who knows about the- I didn't know inst- Where did the memories- Right. Why? What makes the glup- The name says it all. Mm -hmm. Navigating radioactive hazard, that's why it doesn't... That's why he's there. That must be it. Mm -hmm. If Virgil found a way... How do I fight that? There are chemical compounds. Radex. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe... I'll find a way to get through... Good luck. Uh -huh. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Memory Den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Nick. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Kellogg. Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next.
You step through the gate, you got balls. Hey, you. Looking for work? Depends on the work. You'll never find a more fair and honest job. If you don't mind a little... I'll give you 50 caps. Interested? You can do better than that. Trust me. There... Uh-huh. I'm in. That's what it's going to be. I'll give you the lowdown. Ready to get to work? Are you gonna tell me what we're actually- Look, we're pulling a job here. If you expect me to work- I'll tell you what you- Right now, all you need to know is that- sure. You are gonna- mm -hmm. I'm your girl. No one likes a brat. Uh -huh. The other two are down there. on the other side? Oh, yeah. You think Bobby will pay us this week? I don't know, man. Did you just hear something? It's crawling in the fire. is going on in my tunnel. Your men ran off when they saw the Meyer lurks in there. No, really? Thanks for the news report. Well, you stuck around at least. So I guess you're promoted. You get to be my new gun. I think we just need one more guy. An old friend. He'll want a fair cut, but we saw what being cheap got me. Who is this guy? He's just the guy we need to speed things along. Likes gadgets, money, and not much else. First, I think it's best if you actually see what we're after. I have some things to check on in Diamond City. Head over to the noodle shop there, and I'll meet you when I finish up my business.
I'll catch up to you. Order yourself a bowl of noodles if I get held up.
wait there. I'll stay Come on. put. Hey, Valentine. Hey, let me ask you something. Is something wrong? Well, I, I sort of had the same question. It's just, uh, with everything that's happened with you and your, your family, it's a whole hell of a lot to process. I wanted to make sure you're holding up all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Huh. You're a tougher nut than I thought. Tougher than I was. Took me a long damn time to get a feel for this place. Thank goodness I found Diamond City. It's got its flaws, sure, but it beats the hell out of anywhere else in the Commonwealth. Of course, when I took up there back when, people were just as scared of the Institute as they are now. Maybe more. The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Plenty of people assumed I was just a saboteur, moving in to melt down the reactor or poison the drinking water. But at the time, they couldn't exactly turn me away. What? Did I say something? Giving me the silent treatment, huh? Massacre of the CPG? What's that? The Commonwealth Provisional Government. Years back, a group of settlements tried to get together and form a coalition. Every settlement with even a hint of clout sent representatives to try and hash out an agreement. Only the Institute sent a representative of their own. A synth. The man killed every rep at the talks. The Commonwealth Provisional Government was over before it even got off the ground. I took up in town not long after. I was damn lucky they didn't just tell me to scram right then and there. Broken mask? This was long before I'd moved to town, but apparently some gentleman type shows up in Diamond City, heads down to Power Noodles. Guess he didn't like the food because he pulled his pistol and opened fire on the folks enjoying theirs. When security finally put enough holes in him to drop him, they say he was full of servos and sprockets. Just like yours truly. Seems he malfunctioned, went berserk. It was the first time people realized that synths had stopped looking like me and started looking like them. Considering what these folks went through, I felt real lucky they let me in the front gate at all. Why would you want to live among bigots like that? Nah, I couldn't really blame them, given the circumstances. But folks sure started turning the other cheek when I showed up with the mayor's daughter. Gal of about 15. Pride and joy of the mayor back then. Man by the name of Henry Roberts. The young Miss Roberts decided she'd run off with some caravan hand she'd, uh, <clears throat> known for an evening. Turns out the guy was part of a gang of kidnappers. I didn't even know who I was rescuing, just stumbled on a crying girl and four toughs. I took her home and the mayor dubbed me a hero, offered me a place in town. Lots of folks protested and said I was a spy, but he wouldn't have it. Taking up in the city was tricky at first, but I never tried to hide what I was, and people seemed to warm to that. You took down four guys by yourself? I didn't have to. Back then, synths were even more of an unknown quantity than they are today. I told them I was rigged to explode and started going beep, beep, beep. Hardest part of that rescue was keeping from laughing as they climbed over each other to get away. Was it hard settling in? Yeah, they sure didn't make it easy. I started off doing the jobs no one else wanted. I got more banged up being Diamond City's handyman than I ever did living out in the ruins. 
But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. Wife runs off with a new paramour and takes the rent money with her? Talk to the synth. An upset father decides moving him and the kids to good neighbor in the dead of night's not the worst damn idea since the bomb? Go get Nick. After a while, the jobs got so backed up, they didn't even ask me to do the handyman stuff anymore. Hell, I was so happy to do it, it was months before I started charging anyone. I never stopped being Nick the Synth, but it was Nick the Detective folks came to see. It was about then that things, uh, well, things finally started feeling normal. It took me a long time to realize that home is where you make it. And with some time and effort, this place can be home for you, too. That's a long story, but I hope it helps. Wanna get moving? Hello? What are you hiding? There's a bunch of junk in here.
were screaming again last night. Oh, sorry. Did you want to talk about it? No, I'm fine. I just... I don't want to think about it anymore. It's okay. I still think about it. I said I'm fine. I don't know. I told you to go away. I'm here to talk to Jack Cabot. Oh, it's you. Good. Come on in. Let's go meet the boss. Jack, the new gal is here. One moment, one moment. I just have to... Clearly, I'll need to adjust the mixture. Hello, hello. Welcome to Cabot House. I'm Jack Cabot. Edward said you needed to talk to me before he hired me? Yes. Edward finds it tiresome. But I always like to know personally everyone who works for me. Please, have a seat. How about a drink? Edward, the good bourbon, eh? Please, have a seat. Perfect. This place is more a museum than a home. Now, before we get down to business, I have a question I like to ask all my new employees. Is this really the time? Don't interrupt, Edward. The question is this. Do you believe there is other intelligent life in the universe? The universe is a big place. Anything could be out there. Wonderful. Most people's minds are too narrow to admit the possibilities of an infinite universe. But I'm not talking about flying saucers and little green men. I'm talking about the hidden history of our planet. The very origins of human civilization. Ancient powers that modern science, even at its pinnacle, could barely begin to comprehend. Really interesting. Interesting's a word for it. I'm glad to hear you say that. It's become my life's work. My approach is to combine a rigorous scientific method while keeping an absolutely open mind. So much has been closed off to us simply because people assumed they already knew the answers. My father excavated a city in the Rub al Khali in Arabia, which he dated to more than 4,000 years before the rise of any known human civilization. The structures and artifacts were strange, disturbing even. 
clearly not constructed for or by humans. I've spent my life trying to decipher what he uncovered. Jack, can I tell her what I need her to do? I'm sorry, Edward. I just get carried away sometimes. You're sending her to look for the missing shipment. Yeah. Well then, I'd better leave you to it. We'll talk more about this some other time, when things are less rushed. It isn't important now. Welcome to the family. Okay. You're officially hired. Congratulations. What was all that about? Don't worry about it for now. That's part of the job, by the way. It's best to keep an open mind. Jack may be eccentric, but he's definitely not crazy. The job I got for you is simple. Jack owns a facility north of the city. There's an important package that went missing between there and here. I need you to track it down and bring it back to me. Any questions? For starters, what's this package I'm looking for? It's a metal case holding vials of serum. You don't need to worry about what it is. Jack needs it for his research. That's all you need to know. You should start at Parsons State Insane Asylum. Don't let the name spook you. It's just a secure building that we're using. We think the courier got ambushed as he was leaving the place. A gunfire in the distance, but we don't know exactly what happened. Check in with Maria at Parsons. She's... Why does Jack have people guarding an old insane asylum? I don't mind you asking questions. As long as you don't mind me not answering them. If it was important to what I was asking you to do, I'd tell you. In this case, it isn't. Are we good here? How did this package go missing? The courier got there and picked up the package just fine, but never got back here. Could be simple bad luck, or it could be a deliberate ambush. That's why I'm sending you. It's important that you recover the missing package. Anything else? Nothing else. Okay. They're expecting you over at Parsons, so you'd better get going. Almost like the war never even happened in here. Almost.